In this video you will learn how to build a realistic shoreline effect. For this we will stick with a fully procedural workflow in order to build a believable wet sand effect and also create a natural transition between the water and the sand. So in this video here you will learn how to build a nice procedural shoreline. You can see the effect in this little demo scene that I built up in here. And the idea is to have a nice transition between the ocean and the sand part in here. So for this we will have some nice procedural foam here on the contact line and this foam even splashes on to some parts here of the sand itself. And then on the sand we have also some wet part of the sand where the waves hit the sand here before. You can see we have some nice reflections here going on. And then we have some dry part of the sand. And as I said, all of those effects here, they're all done in a procedural way. That means you can change the position of your sand or of your ocean and so on. And everything would be updated accordingly. As usual, all of my scene files can always be found on my Patreon. So you will also find this scene file in here. You can try out the effect there by yourself. So here I changed the view a little bit so that we can focus more on the transition itself. And now let's switch off one by one all of the different elements so that you can see how this whole scene here is built up. So first let's disable the effect that helps to kind of like blend the waves here with the beach. You can see I have this kind of nice transition effect here going on where there are these random splashes here and they kind of break up the overall shape. So now I will disable this here. You can see we have now a much more CG looking boring transition here where we have this very sharp and crisp line. So that is what this effect here is for. And the next one is the wet sand. So if I disable this, you can see that now we only have like our dry sand and now the whole transition doesn't look as nice anymore. Finally, we can disable the foam in our ocean shader. So once I disable this, you can see that now I just have a very boring water material and now the whole transition between the ocean and sand doesn't really work at all anymore. This procedural foam effect I discussed already in my ocean shading tutorial. So head on over there if you want to know how this is built. And now we're going to use this here as a starting point in order to generate the other effects that I just showed you now. So let's start with the wet sand effect first. And here you can see the dry version of the sand, which I built using some assets from Quixel Megascans. I have my own dedicated video in my channel about how to use textures from Quixel Megascans. So I'm not gonna go into the details in this tutorial in here, but I built two versions of this shader. This one would be the dry version. And then if I assign this one in here, so then this one would be the wet version of this shader. And I just darkened the overall color so it looks like it's being soaked full of water. And I reduced the roughness and increased the reflectivity so that we can get these kind of nicer, crisper reflections here. So now the question is how do we blend these two different materials? And if you watched many of my past tutorials, you know my preferred method is always to use a V-Ray blend material. So let's just add a new blend material here into our shading view. So now let's connect the dry part of the sand and add this as the base material into our blend material. Let's also rename this here sand. And now we can add a coat material as well. And let's first apply our new blend material. So we have now our dry sand as a base again. And now instead of connecting this wet sand here first, let's just easily add a new V-Ray material so that we know better what's happening. We're just gonna give this a very bright, for example, red color in here, and then connect this into our blend material as a coat material. So you can see now we have like some not so nice result because it's basically blending the dry sand with 50% of this very reddish material. Let's just give this a bit more darker color and a bit more saturated so that we can easier know what's going on. And at the moment, the blending is happening with this color value in here. So this is set by default to a value of 128. That means 50%. If we put it all the way to white, we will only see our dummy shader in here. And if we put it all the way to pure black, then basically nothing of this shader here shows through. And we only see here our dry sand shader. So now instead of using this color value, let's add 
a map here to drive the transition between these two different shaders. So here I minimized and renamed the shader so we have more room to work with so that we can add our mask. So let's add this. Let's add a V-Ray Dirt in this case. And once we do this, you can see we have some kind of interesting result already. First of all, we have to go into the dirt and we have to invert the occluded and unoccluded color in here. So once you do this, you can see that now we have a mask happening that's below the shoreline here. So it's basically masking out this part. In order to invert this mask, we can change the mode from ambient occlusion to inner occlusion. So then we're just masking out this part. We could also select the ambient and inner occlusion. Then both of these parts here would be masked. But in our case, we just want to mask here the part of the sand which is outside of the water. And then with the distribution, we can increase the contrast. So let's add, for example, a value of five in here. You can see now the contrast of this becomes bigger. And now we can also add a higher radius, for example, a radius of 25 centimeters. And now you can see the radius of this mask here increased. And we're basically masking off a bigger part of our sand in here. So at the moment, we just have a very smooth transitioning happening between the wet sand and the dry sand. And I want to randomize this a little bit to make it more interesting. So for this, we're gonna add a new map into the radius of our ambient occlusion node in here. So to keep it simple, let's just add a new standard 3ds Max noise map in here. And then you can see once we do this, something here changes already. Let's go into the parameters. Let's first define the size. I would choose a value here of 100, for example, and then use a fractal noise. And now we can boost the contrast. You can see at the moment the contrast is not very high. So we can add, for example, here in the high value, a value of 0.6 and in the low value, a value of 0.4. Now you can see we have these kind of random patterns here already appearing. So at the moment, the radius is affected too strong. You can see we have some parts where we have the mask fully visible and then in other part it completely disappears. So I want to blend this effect. And for this, we just go into our dirt again and then change the radius blending here to a value of 50, for example. So you can see now we have like a kind of hybrid effect where we still have like the mass pretty strong in these parts in here, but it's being broken up and randomized in those parts up here. And overall we have now a much more interesting transition here happening. So now I did two things already. First of all, I renamed and reorganized this part here so it doesn't get into our way. And then I added a new geometry on the sand itself to show you a problem that can happen with this approach. So here is a teapot that is placed on or into our sand. And we can see it also generates this kind of mask around it. And that's something that we don't want because basically all of this part, all of this red part here would be replaced with our wet sand. And there would be no reason why there would be wet sand here around this teapot. Basically the wet sand should just be generated by this ocean in here. So we need to find some way to exclude stuff that is placed on the sand from our mass generation. Luckily, this is quite simple. We can just go to our V-Ray Dirt and then just use this affected by button. And then we just only include our ocean and our sand, for example, put this into here, confirm this. And you can see immediately that now this teapot here is not affecting the mask anymore. Basically only the ocean and the sand is basically affecting the mass. That's exactly what we want in this case. So now we can delete this teapot again. And now instead of using this dummy shader, we will exchange this with our wet sand shader. And then once we do this, you can see that now where our mask was generated, we have now this wet sand present. We have these nice reflections here of this tree and everything works now like expected. So now we have this nice wet sand effect in here, but what I think doesn't look so good yet is the transition between here, our ocean and the sand itself. You can see we have this very sharp and crisp line. And in the next step, we're just gonna try to break this up a little bit and make it look a bit more natural. So for this, we're gonna use a new code material here on top. Let's first add this black color into here that once I add the dummy shader, 
nothing will happen because by now it's just being masked with this black color. But now let's add a new V-Ray Dirt effect in here and move this down here. And then let's also go in and switch these two different colors. And now we want to change this mode from ambient occlusion to ambient and inner occlusion so that we mask out this line in here. Let's choose a radius of five centimeters and a fall off of one, for example. You can see now that we have a mask that's basically masking out here the transition line. And now you can see it's still very smooth. So we need to find some texture map to break up this transition and make it appear a bit more random. So now I added a new texture map into the shading view already, which we're gonna use for this transition effect. But first of all, you can also notice that objects which we don't want are also generating the mass. So in this affected by from our V-Ray Dirt, we just need to make sure that we only select our sand and our ocean, put this here into the include. And then once we do this, then you can see that now the palm tree here is not generating any unwanted mask. And now we can easily connect our bitmap into the radius of our V-Ray Dirt. And we can see that now this texture map is transforming here, this transition a little bit. I want to tweak the radius, for example, to a value of 97, so that we still have a little bit of this mask here happening. And now let's work a bit on this mask itself, we can temporarily increase the radius, for example, to a value of 25 to really see what's happening. And now we can see that this texture map here is way too big, way too blurry, basically. So in order to control the scale, let's add a new V-Ray triplanar texture in here. And then in this triplanar texture, let's choose a radius, for example, of 100 centimeters. You can see now that the texture doesn't look as blurred as before anymore. We have these kind of interesting patches that are appearing in here, but I want to further randomize this. So let's choose in the mapping source here, a V-Ray UVW randomizer. And then once we have this, let's just reorganize this here a little bit. Then in the UVW randomizer, we can enable stochastic tiling and then also make a random scale between 50 and 150 so that we have a bigger variation of the scaling of these kind of effects here on our transition line. So now after renaming and reorganizing this here a little bit, we can then easily replace this dummy shader with the ocean shader. And then you can see we have a much nicer transition here happening and doesn't look so CG anymore. We can then play with the width of our radius. So for now I put it to 25 centimeters. You can make it much bigger, for example. Or what I did in my case was to make it pretty minimal so that we just have this very subtle transitioning happening here on the edge and the effect is not as pronounced as before anymore. So there you have it. That concludes basically this tutorial. I hope I could demonstrate that with very simple results or with very simple workflows you can achieve some quite nice and realistic results already. I said parts of this image come from other tutorials that you can find in my channel for example this one here for procedural terrain or the ocean shader itself. I also have a own dedicated video for this. Also if you want you can download all of my scene files on Patreon if that has any additional value for you. You can also watch some additional courses and lessons over there. And other than that, see you in the next video and take care.